Okay, let's jump down in the engine room and uh, I'm gonna give you a somewhat comprehensive tour of what's down there. So again, this is our 1998 C-Ray 370 Sundancer. It's equipped with a twin 7.4 Mercruiser uh, MPI engines on, uh, on V-Drive transmissions. Alrighty, starting from the forward part of the engine room. So that is that would be actually the bulkhead at the back of the aft cabin, if that makes sense to you. So I'm going to kind of scan over everything, and hopefully I remember to point out everything that is worthy of pointing out on this boat. And if I miss something, uh, just leave a comment and ask me a question and say, hey, Paul, what was that over there? Because I found over the years that... Uh, uh, no matter what I say, there's always somebody that says, hey, what about that thing over there? It's like, I didn't even know that was in my video. So here we are. This is the starboard engine. Um, again, they're both Merck uh, 7.4 liter MPI engines. They are basically just 454 cubic inch GM blocks that have been marinized. And marinized is, you know, different uh, exhausts on them and a whole bunch of neat things that they do to make them work best on the water in boats. So let's see, going forward, uh, starboard engine, which is attached to a V-drive transmission. Now, V-drive is simply the engine. This is the back of the engine, but it's at, facing the front of the boat. So what they do to overcome the fact that you want the boat going that way through the water mostly. Yeah, so what they do is they couple it to a V-drive transmission. I'll show you a, a brief diagram of what that looks like and how it makes the engine that is putting power that way to send it that way to the back of the boat. So these transmissions are both velvet drive transmissions and if I remember I'll leave a link to um, a PDF which will give you all the specs on all of these uh, velvet drive transmissions particular to this boat that is. So here we are back to the bulkhead so what do we have there beside a whole bunch of wires well let's just go back over the starboard side that is the starboard fuel tank again gasoline engine so those tanks would be holding gasoline in them and then back to the bulkhead this item here which is not in use right now is uh, engine sink and what that would do if it was working and powered up. It does work, it's just that I have it disconnected. So what that is supposed to do is you set an engine speed, you set one of the engines to a certain speed and this will sync it so both engines stay at that speed. You now a couple of years ago we were away and uh, one of the uh, shifter cables snapped and broke so we had to do a semi-emergency repair right then and there uh, which was a lot of fun and we ended up getting all new cables we got uh, shifter cables for both engines and as well as replace the throttle cables for both engines and this would have been synced to the throttle cable so when the throttle cables came the replacement ones they just are the full length that go right over to this engine as opposed to to make this work they should have been a shorter length and then a short length goes from this piece here over to the port engine but I just I, I didn't need to do that so I just left it as is so this is not working again it would work it's just that I don't I don't want it I don't need it and I would never use it so it's okay so this is just here as a, a, an archive from the factory it's been bypassed so if somebody down the road wanted to ha use this feature and have it in action it would be simply a matter of replacing the throttle cable from the helm back to here and then another short cable going from here over to the port engine and then it it'll work fine but again I don't need it I would never use it so I'm fine without it so over here uh, and I did do a standalone video so I'll leave that uh, link in the description as well this are the fuel tank selectors so what this does is allow the user to draw fuel from either the port or the starboard fuel tank to go to the port or starboard engine but again I have a standalone video on that so you can check that out if you're interested uh, so over here we have a water separating fuel filter another water separating fuel filter and again one for the starboard engine one for the port engine so moving along a little bit farther is my Pro Mariner uh, automatic battery charger which I installed two years ago when we first bought this boat 
fantastic bit of kit. Uh, highly recommend that if you have an older boat like this and it's still the original battery charger, lose it, put something like this in. This is works magic. I put the same identical unit in our prior boat, our 330 Sundancer, and it, uh, it, it it's fantastic. I would highly recommend if you have an older boat with the old original battery charger, uh, swapping it out to something like this will be a world of loving your batteries because this thing does everything magically in the background. Uh, I have a full standalone video of the installation that I did two years ago. Again, I'll try to leave a link in the description and you can look it up and see what I did there and you'll see how simple it is to swap that thing out. Now immediately above that is a Halon a fire extinguisher and this is automatic as well. It will I think it's this little device down there. If it gets too hot in here, it'll automatically and the, the it's designed to blow back towards the engines and instantly extinguish any potential fire that's going on in here. Okay, over here, DC reset buttons. They're kind of like breakers, but not. You can reset them so they're sort of like a breaker. Uh, over here, there's a whole bunch of heavy wires that are going from here to there. Um, from the batteries and doing their thing and work on their magic and making the boat run and do everything it needs to do. Here is uh, the battery on and off switch that is for the generator so that is to shut the battery off or on to start the generator. Battery isolator, light self-explanatory. Let's zoom over here towards the port side and that is all the battery banks so there's two four for the engine starting house batteries and then a standalone battery right down there just for the generator to start the generator because if all the other batteries die and you have no power to start your engines you can always fire up the generator get that thing working charge the batteries and start the boat and be safe so before I get too far along, this is the port side engine, which is the identical engine to the starboard one. It's just positioned on the opposite side of the boat. Same transmissions, everything. And these guys here are just steps factory installed to climb in and out of the engine room, which really, really makes it convenient and safer to climb in and out of this, uh, this space as well, do some work. Okay, uh, while I'm here, I'm just going to show you real quickly. It would have been the same on the other side. That's the, uh, the starter motor, solenoid. Um, on the engine, this is the... Um, so on the engine itself, this is the heat exchanger for the transmissions to keep them cool. Uh, water would flow through there and it's heat exchanger and keeps oil cool, blah, blah, blah. And I know I'm glossing over a lot of this stuff in a more basic terms. But if you want to look this up, at least you'll know, understand what that is, why it's here, and why it's important. And a funny story. A number of years ago, again, when we had our 400 sedan bridge, uh, it was the first of the season. I think it was the first full summer that we had that boat after buying it. We were driving across the lake. Anchor Girl heard, anchor girl heard a, a different sound coming from one of the engines. And so I investigated after seeing that the engine temperature was going up, shut, the, shut that engine off, came down the engine room only to discover that one of these lines had blown off. Um, I'm going to guess that was due to the winterizing the previous year from the previous boat owner and they just didn't tighten the clamps down enough. And so while the boat was going, it was many, many gallons of water was just flooding into the engine room. Uh, but we were okay. And that's why the engine temperature got high and it was just not because there wasn't enough cooling water going through the engines because it was mostly just being bumped right into the bilge so that was an easy fix just put that back on clamped it on dried it up and we were good to go so moving back to here port side that would be the uh, port side hall that there behind that little uh, wall for lack of a better term that is where the port side fuel tank is they offset it a little bit farther ahead on this here just to make sure everything could fit. Okay, behind the batteries, we have uh, the pump for the vacuum flush toilet system as well. I got a standalone video for that. Servicing, changing the uh, pump, the, um, um, the duct bill valves, and on and on and on. 
look at my playlist for the how I did it boat re, uh, boat repairs and upgrades videos and you'll see lots of videos about vacuum flush toilet systems okay and all the repairs on her this boat and as well as our two prior boats now behind that is the poop tank that's the big 50 gallon holding tank that's where everything goes from the toilet to there and then pumped into there and then it gets pumped out okay oh that pretty tubular thing up there that is the vent filter for the holding tank and as well I got a standalone video on replacing that because I only did that about a month ago and I posted it so look for that alrighty I get to stand up straight again so just looking back behind the port side engine uh, towards the transom um, pretty self-explanatory there's just a lot of open space because the engine is farther forward against from that wall and that is the rudder and the steering you'll see that both rudders are connected by that rod across the back so when you turn one it's connected the other so they're both in sync me mechanically and that's where the rudder shaft is that's where it comes through the hull itself and that's the pivot point right there okay so down there is the strainer for the seawater when I say seawater uh, that refers to the water that's coming out of the sea in our point in our case it's fresh water is coming out of the lake or where we are right now in a river and that goes through a strainer and that's supposed to stop any heavy stuff like seaweed or dead fish or whatever from going into the engine and when I say dead fish that's a true story because last year we actually caught a dead fish in the pickup line right back there that goes into the generator which was causing it to overheat so look for that video on my channel as well center line of the boat right to the very back of the transom there's a few items here those blue boxes are just holding the uh, float switches for these two bilge pumps those two white items with the white hoses going off them those are bilge pumps for back here the aftmost one is sitting lower so that would come on first in a flooding situation because the switch is down low whereas this one here the switch is a little higher so if, if it's a bad flooding situation a hose comes off whatever that one would kick on uh, secondarily and hopefully save the boat now those uh, three hoses coming off of those seacocks which are just valves that you can turn on and off they're open right now engine engine generator and that's where like I say that's where the seawater the cooling water comes into the boat and then we'll go to well through the strainers and then to engine engine generator now looking back here let's go more over to the starboard side again so we have the same thing that we had on the port side and that is the other rudder shaft which helps one turn the boat while underway and the connecting rod and everything else now you're also going to see sorry that's just the uh, air conditioning pump is coming on now you're also going to see a bunch of green wires attached to pretty much everything everything metallic those are bonding wires it's just so that everything is bonded together I'm not going to go into uh, the electrical <laughs> ideas behind bonding. You can look that up yourself. Uh, but those are very, very important to protect well, all the brass stuff on the boat from deterioration, from uh, electrolysis. Okay, so strainer for the starboard engine over here. Strainer for the generator. Over and real quick, go to the generator. Don't worry, I'm not done. Back, back here. I'm gonna come back to that in a second. But that is a generator. It's a Westerbeek 7.2 kilowatt gas powered generator, which works fantastically. We've used it quite a bit uh, during our most recent getaway because it was so hot. So we need the generator to run if we don't have short power to run the air conditioners. That black cylindrical uh, object is an auxiliary muffler for the generator. I never made a video of me putting that on here, but I did do two videos from our previous boats that both has, had Westerbeek gas engines, 
and then on both I put those auxiliary mufflers in that's the main muffler right back there so the auxiliary muffler is ahead of that and it really really dulls down the noise coming out of those uh, big gas engines so uh, again look at my playlist of how I did a boat repairs and upgrades and you'll see two videos on how to install those things and where to buy them as well so I'm just gonna back up here a little bit and see that big tube this big tube that one and that one they are running off of the engines not running off the engines are running away from the engine and this is where the water that comes in from those uh, strainers goes through the engine to cool the engines down and then they are exited actually through the exhaust and the exhaust fumes as well as the water will go through these big tubes so there's four one for each side of each engine two times two is four and then they go through a tubular muffler there now C Ray has what they call their patented underwater exhaust so what happens is uh, under power uh, the exhaust will actually go down through that big tube under the boat and exhaust out that way and it'll shoot under the boat because this is well below the water level right here and that will keep the noise down potentially but that only happens when there's a lot of force which means when the engine's revving up probably past I'm going to guess in around 1500 rpm to actually force the water down below the water line and out but before that amount of pressure and you don't have the engine speed up there's a little bypass oh I gotta really crouch see that comes off the top of the muffler and the same on the other side and it will go up and out and through a little muffler and exhaust out the side of the uh, boat so when the boat starts up you'll initially see the exhaust and the water spewing out both sides which is a good thing because then you can tell that your you know your cooling system is actually working and doing its thing and then when the engine speed goes up a lot of that will then be forced down under the boat and out the back of the boat and again the whole idea is to, to cut the noise the engine noise down quite a bit while it's running so here we are we're back to the starboard engine looking forward we've come back in a big circle and then looking at the port side engine and I'm just going to point out that there's a lot of things that I haven't specifically mentioned including a brilliant thing on all boats is this is the uh, oil filter for the port engine and starboard has the same one on its side on that side of course and this is the remote oil filter and the reason that it's done like this because from the factory if this was a car that filter would be underneath the bottom of the engine so they can get at it and drain it but on the boat it's very very difficult to get it so they 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 do this in a remote fashion and that makes the job of changing the filter changing oil a lot lot easier now one thing i just do i do want to mention that i haven't shared in the past is that these are the remote oil lines that are coming from the the original filter location on the bottom of the block up to the filter and then back down to where the engine so that the oil can circulate through now when we first bought the boat um, it was pointed out to us the marine the marine mechanic is remember I'm gonna leave a link in the description when we bought this boat in 2022 we bought it sight unseen during COVID and all that crap so we couldn't get to actually look at, at the boat physically in person so uh, working with both a really really good first of all a excellent salesman a great uh, marine surveyor and then a really good uh, marina mechanic they were our eyes on site and the thing was pointed out that those remote oil filter lines had been compromised and he suggested that they be replaced so they were we you know contacted the seller and they agreed to do that but uh, my mistake was not insisting to replace the ones on the port engine because if one goes they all go so I replaced these on year one um, straightforward job just a little bit of grunting and curse words but it's all done so the, all those lines have been replaced so we don't have to worry about that looking under the lowest step at the forward end of the engine room you'll see that there is another uh, bilge pump forward bilge pump on a float switch and you'll see these things can be manually operated by just 
turn in this little dial here and come on, baby. See, you do that once in a while just to uh, make sure that everything's good, that it hasn't blown a fuse or anything, and that the pump is still going to work if needed. But uh, we have two original factory installed through hull transducers. Um, now, when we bought the boat, I replaced all the electronics at the helm, which included a new depth sounder. So these guys were not compatible. So I put a shoot through transducer. So no hole had to be drilled. This is just surface mounted and it works fantastically. Again, look at my how I did at playlist and see the complete installation of not only that, as well as a follow up video on changing the antifreeze in that. And you can see what? Yes, it's true. Um, and all the electronics that I installed at that point. But something I do want to point out, if you have through hull transducers, um, you should really have these guys here, which are emergency bungs. They're just uh, blocks. So plugs, basically. So if this popped out, broke, hit bottom, whatever, and there's water gushing through, these guys are designed that you can shove them into the hole and hopefully plug uh, any water that's coming through and if you don't have those you can buy them out of wood rubber uh, just look online they're a good thing to have um, just in case there's an emergency nobody wants that so there we are uh, before i hurt myself anymore <laughs> <laughs> or bang into anything. I'm just gonna wrap this one up. Uh, so obviously this isn't an ultra super comprehensive detailed look at everything. So if you have any questions, leave a question down in the comment section down below and I will try to reply to you. And I might even have a photo or even a short video clip of whatever you're gonna ask me. So feel free, knock yourself up. I'm always here to uh, offer any help that I can. All right, and again, please, 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 Look, always read the description on all my videos because there's always lots of extra information in there, links, whatnot. And look at my How I Did It Boat Repairs and Upgrades video uh, playlist because there is almost 150 of those types of videos right now, do-it-yourself type of things. So, yeah, that's that. So, this is the engine room in our beautiful 1998 370 Sundancer by C-Ray. Alrighty, that's it for now, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.